T5 investigates a possible security flaw that could put travelers and military troops at risk. And it's part ongoing technology series, the new hacking threat. NBC5's Temi Leitner reports. Whether traveling by air, by sea, or by land, pilots, ship captains, and military personnel rely on satellite networks to communicate when there are no phone lines or wireless available. But are these life and death communication channels secure? Those devices are wide open right now. Ruben Santamarta researches cybersecurity in a lab in Spain. He says he has been able to use something called reverse engineering or decoding to hack satellite communications equipment used in aerospace, military, and maritime industries. For the aerospace sector, we can disrupt satellite communications, potentially modify the data that goes through those channels. In some cases, you need physical access to compromise the devices we analyzed. But in other cases, you can use the Wi-Fi or the in-flight entertainment network to access that device. Santa Marta recently published this 25-page report and went public with his fine death hacking conference in the world. We traveled here to Las Vegas where the top hackers and security experts meet annually to discuss the latest research in cyber threats. His research has raised concerns in the aviation industry. He has uncovered real vulnerabilities in satellite communication systems. Digital forensics professor Dr. Phil Postra admits that it might be possible to send a bogus message, potentially rerouting a plane, but it's unlikely a pilot would actually act on it. There are checks in place and the pilot will verify those messages before acting on them. And as for the claim that it's possible to hack into a passenger jet through the Wi-Fi? And if someone were able to do that, we monitor the flight path all the time. So if we see the flight path doing something that we don't intend or want it to do, it's in a half a second to just Click it off, and it's ours. We're just flying it like we have for thousands of hours by hand. Captain Polly Kadoff says humans, not computers, are the best line of defense against cyber threats. One of the topics in aviation that is um, really being hit hard, the concern about pilots being overly reliant on automation. As automation in planes increases, the chance of cyber hijacking does as well. All those vulnerabilities are really dangerous. They need to change the, the way they are implementing those devices. We reached out to the companies which make these satellite communication systems and the ones we could reach acknowledge they are familiar with Santa Marta's findings and say they would act quickly to address any vulnerability within their systems if verified. We have put their full statements online at our website. Tammy Leitner, NBC5 Investigates. NBC5 investigates the new hackers. The healthcare industry was recently hit hard after hackers stole millions of electronic patient records. Now NBC5 investigates exposes a new threat that could potentially cost lives. Tammy Leitner explores the latest in medical cyber crime. We count on medical devices to keep us alive but we've discovered not all of those devices are secure, making it easy for cyber criminals to remotely access your device. This is the left atrium. Surgery may fix this patient's irregular heartbeat. Patients who have AFib also commonly need pacemakers. Cardiologist Brad Knight and his team at Northwestern implant about 600 pacemakers and defibrillators each year which can be remotely monitored and programmed. We can wirelessly communicate with these devices. But this cutting edge technology is what makes these devices vulnerable. Occasionally patients will raise the question of, you know, can someone hack into these devices? That does give me some concern. Jerry Hoffman had open heart surgery at 34 and a pacemaker a year later. I don't know what people will do with the actual data, but they certainly could potentially manipulate the device for one reason or another. The idea of breaking into medical devices became a reality when security expert and yeah, diabetic yeah. Jay Radcliffe hacked into his own insulin pump. I was able to write my own program to modify all the settings, turn the insulin pump off, but also change all of the therapy settings which is a very dangerous thing to do. Radcliffe's groundbreaking research exposed a security flaw that could allow hackers to remotely control the amount of insulin 
potentially administering a lethal dose. The only thing you needed to know was the six digit serial number on the back of this. This is an industry wide problem. Security experts say some medical device companies have designed cutting edge products, but have not given much thought to possible security flaws that could exist with the equipment and the software. I think everything with a computer has flaws. Dr. Kevin Fu tests uh, all types of medical devices in his lab here at the University of Michigan. They do have shortfalls and that security really wasn't part of the picture when they were uh, designed. Fu uses a synthetic cadaver to test out the devices. And we actually look at defensive approaches, technologies that allow us to either detect or stop uh, malicious attacks. Now recognizes Dr. Fu. He's been called to testify before both the House and the Senate. Ultimately, he hopes his research will force medical device companies to increase security. The problem with malicious hacks is what's going to come down the line in the future if the manufacturing community doesn't solve these problems. A big concern among security experts. People who are building these devices, they're not security people. They're not people who are familiar with what it takes to build something to withstand all of the attacks. And if these security issues are not addressed, doctors say technology and patient care can't move forward. There are a lot more things we can do for patients that are not possibilities currently because of these concerns about you know, someone hacking into the device. About a year ago, the FDA issued guidelines on encryption for wireless medical devices, but currently there are no federal requirements. Tammy Leitner, NBC5 Investigates. Its experts are saying the first cyber murder could happen anytime. So what exactly does that mean? Tammy Leitner reports on a dangerous new hacking threat. Many devices that we use every day are connected to the Internet, and that makes us vulnerable to cyber criminals. Experts warn it's only a matter of time before a malicious hacker commits a murder by tampering with one of your connected devices. Millions of lines of computer code live in your smartphone, your car, your fitness band, even medical devices. I don't think people realize how much technology is being embedded into their everyday lives, and into their homes, and into, even into their bodies. But could a malicious hacker manipulate that code and wreak havoc on your life? Or worse yet, commit a murder. A single software flaw or a single security vulnerability that's identified in that technology could cause, you know, the worst cases, it could cause death. A recent report released by Europol, the European Union's criminal intelligence agency, warns of that very thing. It's possible uh, if you are a cyber criminal to, to, to sit in, let's say, uh, a West, Western European country to uh, target somebody in the United States. Cyber attacks could target anything connected to the internet, your car or home, and if you think that smart fridge can't be hacked, think again. The first cyber attack of this type happened this year when cyber criminals took control of home appliances and used them to send out nearly a million spam emails. The deputy director of the CIA's technology division addressed this attack just last month. Smart refrigerators have been used in distributed denial of service attacks. Some cyber criminals hide out in a place called the deep web where they can access an underground, untraceable world. You can buy drugs, guns, counterfeit passports, stolen credit cards, just about anything. You can even hire a hitman. Well, there have been some cases in which um, at least um, uh, some attempts have been made. Federal court records show the FBI arrested Ross Ulbricht last year for hiring a hitman and multiple drug charges. Ulbricht is the accused ringleader of the online marketplace Silk Road, where users could trade drugs and guns. He pled not guilty to all charges. Do you think the average person realizes that these problems exist? Most people probably hear about these types of things and maybe they see it in you know, TV shows, but they don't think they realize that these types of things are real. Law enforcement really is at a disadvantage. Many of these cyber crimes cross jurisdictional boundaries and some of these cyber criminals operate from other countries, which makes it extremely difficult to track them. Tammy Leitner, NBC5 Investigates. Well, tonight, NBC5 investigates. You know, most of us do hate the traffic jams. But what if someone was able to manipulate traffic signals and back up traffic for days? Tammy Leitner reports on the new hacking threat. This scenario is a real possibility as more cities turn to wireless traffic systems. And some of those systems are unprotected and open to a cyber attack. 
We drive by traffic lights every day and trust they will work. So we drive straight through the intersection. Red means we should stop and green means we should go and the light will work as intended. But what if it didn't? We could actually make the lights all red. We could change the light to be green in our direction. A research team at the University of Michigan discovered that with just a basic laptop and a wireless radio, it could hack into the software system of a company called Econolite. In their experiment, they were able to manipulate more than 1,000 traffic lights in one town alone, turning red lights green and green lights red. How easy was it? Uh, surprisingly easy. The reason? It doesn't have passwords on it, um, like there's no encryption on the wireless communications. And now NBC5 Investigates has discovered similar vulnerabilities with another company called Census Networks, which controls wireless traffic systems in major hubs, including Washington, D.C., Los Angeles, New York City, San Francisco, and Chicago. Just two months ago, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security issued this advisory warning of these vulnerabilities after learning about the research of Argentinian security expert Cesar Cerruto. The problem is that it's not protected information, it's just uh, not encrypted. Cerruto used a cheap drone flying hundreds of feet above to show how he could hack into census's traffic signals below. I just program it to, to send fake data to the traffic control system so I can make them do things that they are not supposed to do. Here's how a traffic control system works. There are sensors buried in the road which detect the cars. That information is then sent up to an access point which is connected to the traffic control system which controls the lights. And all of this is done wirelessly. These census networks are used in 10 countries, 45 states, and throughout Illinois. A census spokesperson told us Ceruto did identify an area where we had not encrypted the data stream and that they had issued a software fix. But the company acknowledged to NBC5 Investigates that it is leaving it up to each city whether they use the fix and that cities across the U.S. could still be vulnerable. After our conversation with Census, we were sent this two-page letter denying that their system could be manipulated to cause changes to traffic signals and saying one cannot use our wireless protocol to access information or send data. The Chicago Department of Transportation could not tell us whether it has upgraded the software to make Chicago's traffic lights more secure. But security researchers say this simple fix could prevent a future attack. The real attacks here are things where you, you clog up congestion in a city. So if you can turn all the lights to red, people will be stuck in traffic jams for hours. We ask repeatedly that both census networks and Econolite go on camera to discuss these issues. Both companies declined. Tammy Leitner, NBC5 Investigates. NBC5 Investigates. There's a new type of online soldier in the cyber war against terrorism. They operate on their own without law enforcement and follow their own set of rules. Tammy Leitner explores this illegal world where the so-called good guys break the law in the name of patriotism. They call themselves patriotic hackers, and they claim they are doing what the government has not yet been able to do, taking down terrorist-run websites that recruit Westerners and support jihadi propaganda. He operates in the shadows, a lone wolf, waging war on terrorists. Little is known about the controversial cyber vigilante who goes only by the moniker Jester. The self-described patriot claims to be former military with contacts in the government, and a cult following of more than 66,000 Twitter followers. The Jester, he looks like a, he's a white hat hacker. NBC5 Investigates contacted Jester five months ago through Twitter. After countless texts and a vetting process, he agreed to a rare interview in an encrypted chat room. What exactly do you do? Well, approximately five years ago, I realized that there was a growing threat from jihadis online using the internet to recruit, radicalize, and even train homegrowners. I decided to research their favorite haunts, collect intelligence on the users and admins, and in many cases, remove them. Recruiting websites like these. He claims to have hacked and taken down more than 170 jihadi websites since 2010, each success marked by the military phrase, Tango Down. NBC5 Investigates confirmed his claims through three independent sources. And for the first time, he reveals that these highly produced recruiting sites are likely being run from a university campus in Iraq, Syria. He's actually doing some social good by, by taking down these, 
these malicious um, websites. Cyber terrorism expert Ryan Maness says hackers like Jester can be motivated by a sense of duty. We're not the only country that has that. Russia has a big contingent of cyber patriots that use their, their skills on the computer to put forth their, their country's national interests. Greetings citizens of the world. We are anonymous. Operation ISIS continues. Just Greetings last week, the hacking group the Anonymous we released anonymous. this video claiming to have targeted 800 Twitter accounts, Facebook pages, and dozens of emails associated with ISIS. ISIS, we will hunt you, take down your sites, accounts, emails, and expose you. From now on, no safe place for you online. Without a doubt, the biggest threat that we're looking at is the ISIS threat. Federal agent Brian Murphy heads Chicago's counterterrorism division with a major focus on Islamic State recruiting websites. We identify them, we try to engage them and understand their networks, and we look to try to take uh, targeted action that will disrupt that network. Similar to what hacktivists like Anonymous and Jester say they do. My advice would be that's the role of the government, and while we appreciate the sentiment, um, it may have consequences beyond what these people are, are trying to do. The government tells us any type of hacking is illegal, yet the mysterious hacker known as Jester has managed to remain anonymous and operate for years. Tammy Leitner, NBC5 Investigates. Hacking into airplanes. The feds have now issued an alert warning that airlines that some planes are vulnerable to this very thing. NBC5 investigates Tammy Leitner has details on this ongoing investigation. Tammy? Allison, this alert comes out after a tweet was sent out by a security researcher who claims to have hacked into a United Airlines flight while on board. I did not think it would create quite the controversy that it has done. Security researcher Chris Roberts was on board a United Airlines flight when he sent out this tweet, joking about accessing the plane's computer and oxygen mask. He was pulled from the flight by the FBI. Other tweets seem to show actual airline data pages. United Airlines has now banned him from flying. It is definitely possible with the research that we've done and others have done, to manipulate the electronics through the in-flight entertainment system and satellite communications. Last year, NBC5 Investigates first told you about this possible flaw in the in-flight entertainment system that allows some planes to be hacked. We can disrupt satellite communications, potentially modify the data that goes through those channels. Spanish cybersecurity researcher Ruben Santamarta shows us how it can be done. All those vulnerabilities are really dangerous. They need to change the, the way they are implementing those devices. And now it appears the feds are following that advice. The FBI and TSA recently issued an alert to airlines warning them to be on the lookout for suspicious activity. And just last week, a government watchdog group warned that cockpit computers and air traffic control systems could be vulnerable. What we found was the potential for risk. Gerald Dillingham was one of the authors on that report and warns that the FAA needs to do more to protect airline passengers. That it needs to adapt a more holistic approach to cybersecurity. The FAA says it's unaware of any successful attacks. Rob, back to you. Scary story. Thanks for staying on it, Tammy. Remote devices are being equipped with tiny computers capable of stealing your private information. Here's NBC5's Tammy Leitner. The flashing lights appeared out of nowhere and then disappeared. You feel really uncomfortable. I looked out the window and saw that there's a drone in our place. Noah, me, and Peter Kopp had big concerns when a drone landed in their Chicago yard in April. It could be a toy and something completely innocuous, uh, but it could also be somebody who wants uh, information. The idea of using a drone to gather or steal information is now a reality. It's a $35 computer that you can modify in ways you want. Security researchers Parker Schmidt and David Jordan attached a tiny computer to an inexpensive drone. Together, this device is capable of silently sucking your personal data. It adds a whole level of anonymity that the that these bad guys have thrived on. In a controlled lab setting, they showed us how their drone could find other Wi-Fi networks and then trick someone else's computer into connecting to their network. Even our own cell phones were not immune. Once in, they could get credit card information, home addresses, and telephone numbers. 
That means anywhere a drone can fly, you could be vulnerable. From my vantage point up here in the Sky 5 chopper, about a thousand feet in the air, I can easily see the drone, but most people never see an attack coming. It can happen in the privacy of your own home, a public place, or even a business. It's basically one way of stealing information. Attorney Whitney Merrill specializes in technology cases where the bad guy is often a hacker, a phantom, so to speak, operating illegally in an anonymous world of Wi-Fi and now drones. I think more people need to understand in particular that Wi-Fi, open Wi-Fi is not secure. If you are on the same network as somebody else, they can be seeing the information that's traveling across that network. Does the average person know that this technology is out there? No, I don't think so. Generally, the bad guys already have it and they're gonna use it. As for the cops, the drone that landed in their yard was not outfitted with the technology to steal information, but it did have a camera. It's a clear intrusion in your privacy. There are things that you can do to protect yourself against hackers. First of all, avoid open Wi-Fi networks. Next, make sure that the web address is correct and it's not a dummy site. Now, when you are on public Wi-Fi, you should always see an HTTPS at the top of the website. And finally, you want to see a lock when you're on a credit card site or a banking site indicating that the website is encrypted. Tammy Leitner, NBC5 Investigate.